animations and transitions in CSS seem pretty simple at first, but as soon as you start dealing with more complicated things like how do you deal with auto heights, how do you deal with the display property, how do you animate things as soon as they appear, all these different edge cases become quite difficult to deal with and usually require tons of JavaScript. That is until now. There are three brand new CSS features I want to talk about that drastically improve the ability to do transitions and animations, and you can start using them right now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And here we have a really simple accordion style animation that we wanna do. When I click open, I want this to slide open. And when I click it again, I want it to slide close. A very simple thing that is generally quite easy to do, at least it seems like it's easy to do, but actually handling this smooth animation properly is incredibly difficult without using JavaScript or some hacky solutions. The way that I have this working right now is quite hacky. If we look at the CSS, you can see by default this body, which is just this HTML right here that we're hiding and showing. Right now, it starts at a height of zero. We're trying to transition that height property over half a second, and then I'm hard coding the height to 40 pixels when I add the show class, which I'm just doing inside my JavaScript, rather simple code. But this is obviously not going to work because if I add more content to this, for example, I add a bunch more content and I click open, you can see all that additional content I added is now being cut off because there's not enough space for it. So using a hard coded pixel value here is not ideal. So instead we want to use auto instead. That's going to make sure that it takes up as much space as it needs. For example, if I remove all that extra content that I added and I click save and I open this, you'll notice that now it takes up the correct amount of space. But the problem is that now my animation no longer works. And that's because in CSS, you cannot animate to an auto property. You can only go from one hard-coded value to another. You can't animate to this auto value. So to get around this, you usually would have to write some JavaScript that would calculate the heights for you and do the animation that way. Not very performant and definitely not very clean code to write, which is why the brand new property called calc size is so amazing. It's actually a function. You just type in calc size, pass it in auto. And what this essentially does is it'll calculate the correct size and essentially act as if you hard coded the size in there. So now when I save, you notice automatically it gives me a smooth transition between auto and it doesn't matter how much content I have inside of here, it's going to always properly animate between these positions no matter how much content there is. Even if my content is changing, it's perfectly gonna do that animation every single time. Now, unfortunately, of all the three different properties I'm gonna be talking about today, this is one with by far the least amount of browser support. But even if it has no browser support at all, the really great thing is that you can come in here, type in height, set it to auto. And by default, if your browser does not support calc size, what's gonna happen is you're just gonna get this non-animated version. It's not ideal, but it's going to work. And then what you can do is you can come in here and on the browsers that support this calc size, you're going to get this really nice animation. This is called progressive enhancement. Essentially on newer browsers that support nice features, we're able to provide a nicer experience to the user, but on older browsers, we're still providing the same experience. It just may not have all the bells and whistles, like it won't have as nice of an animation. So it's going to work just fine in new browsers and the old browsers will still work fine. It just won't have the animation. Now, when it comes to browser support for calc size, currently no browser actually supports this. The only way I'm able to get this work is if I download the Canary version of Chrome, which is like the developer version, and I enable this experimental web platform features. That's the only way that this works currently, but I'm hoping this is something that's implemented into the browsers in a short period of time because it's such a nice thing that we've been asking for for probably 20 plus years at this point. Now, the next property I wanna talk about is useful on its own, but it's doubly as useful with the third thing that I'm going to talk about, and that is the starting style property. And this actually has much better browser support. If I pull this up in Can I Use, you can see that Chrome and Edge currently support this. The brand newest version of Safari supports this. It's really only Firefox that doesn't support this property. But again, this is something that's really useful for progressive enhancements. So even if it's not supported in all browsers, you can still start using it today because you only need to be able to use it for extra things like adding in extra animations. So the whole idea behind this at starting style is just to tell an element what you want it to look like at the point that is going to be first rendered or shown on the screen. So what we can do is we can get rid of a lot of the code that we have here. And I'm just going to create a single div. And this is just going to be a div that is a box. And it's just not going to have any content inside of it. And we'll just give it a class name of a box. There we go. That way we can add some styles to it. We can get rid of pretty much everything inside of here. We can come in with our box. Let's say that is going to be a background color of red. Height is 50 pixels. And width is going to be 50 pixels. There we go, we have this red box showing up on our screen and let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll just do 100 by 100. There we go, we have this nice big red box showing up on our screen. And what happens if you want this box to transition in? Essentially, you want it to start out at a scale of zero, transition to a scale of one. 
Well, you may think you can come in here and say that you're gonna have a transition and it's going to be a one second transition on that scale property. So we'll say scale property transition for one second. If we give this a save, you'll notice it won't actually do anything. Doesn't matter how much I refresh my page, nothing actually happens. And that's because it already starts at a scale of one. If you wanted to do this normally, you could do it with an animation. For example, you can come in here, you could specify an animation called grow, just like that. You can specify the duration for it. We'll say it's gonna be one second, just like that. And then inside of here, we can create some keyframes called grow. And it's going to go from a scale of zero and it's gonna to go to a scale of one. And now if I give that a save, you can see it grows in just like that. And a lot of times to make sure that this actually works properly, you need to make sure you use a forwards property on here to make sure it actually keeps all these keyframes from this two property. The only reason it's actually working like it is without this forwards property is because the default for scale is one. But if you were, for example, shrinking it down or going to a different value, for example, if I was going to 0.5 here instead, now you'll notice that this actually doesn't quite work. It goes to 0.5 and then boom, pops all the way to one. That's just because I need this forwards property here. If you're not sure how this forwards property works, I'll link a video talking about anything you need to do about animations in the cards and description for you. So essentially the downside of doing this with an animation is you have to deal with keyframes with from to the forwards property. There's just a bunch of extra complexity essentially. So instead what you can do is you can come in here, specify what you want the scale to be. In our case, a scale of one. This is the default, so we can just leave it off completely. And then we can come in here and we can say that we want to do that transition. So we can say transition to scale property over one second. And then we're just going to do nesting. So we can say that we have some starting styles just like this. Ignore the fact that there's no syntax highlighting. That's just because this is a rather new feature to CSS. And we can come in here and we want the scale to be zero by default. So now if I give that a save, refresh my page, and I make sure that I spell this starting style instead of starting styles, now you'll notice when I refresh that it grows up to be this scale of one. Now, if I wanted it to be like a scale of 0.5, for example, to show you that this works rather easily, we can come in here at 0.5, give that a quick save, refresh, and you can see it grows up to that scale of 0.5. So starting style just allows you to animate something as soon as it appears. So the very first time this thing appears, it's going to do this particular animation and it's going to have this starting style and it's gonna to move to whatever starting style you want in this thing. So here is essentially the starting position and here is the ending position. Now on its own, this isn't super useful because you can essentially do this with animations already, but when you combine it together with the next thing, which is the ability to animate discrete properties, it becomes incredibly useful. So to show you what I'm talking about, what I wanna do is I wanna make it so that this box is going to appear and disappear when I click this open button right here. So we gave this a style of box. So let's just select that class, just like that. And we're gonna add a show class to it. So we'll say here, dot box, Dot show. And now what I want to do is I want this box to be hidden by default. So we're going to come up here with a display of none. And then down here, we'll come in with a display of block. So we can essentially hide and show this box. And instead of using scale, I'm actually going to use the transform property. So we're just going to transform this by, let's say, 20 pixels or something like that. And down here, we're going to have our transform be zero. So it's going to start slightly offset and kind of move into place. We'll get rid of all this stuff. We'll change this to be transform. There we go. And this actually isn't transform, this is translate. There we go. So we're gonna translate the box. And now if we give that a quick save, we click open close, you can see it's properly toggling our box to and from this display of block, but it's not actually doing any transition of our translate property. You can see it just appears and it disappears. The reason this happens is because every single time you just change the display property, we're essentially going from block to none when we hide it. So it's instantly disappearing. Obviously we can't animate. And when we're making it up here, we can't do a transition because it's just appearing. So we can do the starting styles to actually fix the first portion of this problem. So we can come in here with a starting style and we can say that our starting style is going to be translate 20 pixels, just like that. We can remove that from here. So by default, the translate is going to be at zero and we're gonna be starting it at 20 pixels. So now if I just refresh my page and I open this and I close it, you notice it's not quite working. That's because we need our starting style to actually be here where we actually change it to a display block. So we're starting at 20, moving down to zero. That should fix the problem. So now I'm just gonna refresh my page and open this up and you can see it starts offset by 20 pixels and then moves to the left to get to the place where it should be. Again, you can see that it's properly doing the movement when we open it because we have a starting style. But the next problem we're running into is as soon as we change the display none, it instantly disappears and we have no way to animate this property or at least we didn't have a way to animate this property until now. There's a brand new transition-based property called transition behavior. And this allows you to pass in a property called allow 
discrete, just like that. And this will allow you to do discrete animations. And if I spell that properly, there we go. Essentially, this will let you animate properties that normally cannot be animated. For example, the block or the display property usually can just be one property or another. There's no way to animate between them, but allow discrete lets you do that. So we can come in here and we're going to add a transition on block as well. That's going to take one second and we're going to have our animation on translate. So we have both of these transitions being shown right here. So now when I open this, you can see it moves. And when we close it, you can see it's still not quite working as we expect. This is because instead of block here, this should obviously say display because that's the thing that we want to animate. So now we can see we can open it, it moves over. And when we click to close it, it waits one second before it actually closes. So we're properly animating this display property since it's waiting the full one second before the box actually disappears, but we're not doing any other animations on the translate property. And that's because if we look here right now, our translate defaults to zero because that's the default value. And in our show, it's also set to zero. So there's obviously no transition going on. If we set a value for what we want to transition to inside of here, for example, we could set a translate of negative 20 pixels. So it goes the other direction. Now when we save, we open it, you can see it slides to the left. And when we close it, it slides to the left and then disappears. So you can see that we can have a separate animation for the starting and the ending, which is really nice. Normally, that's something that you can't do very easily with the transition property, but starting style allows you to do that. And this is something that you normally would never be able to do in traditional CSS. You would have to write JavaScript code for this. Think about if you want to have a modal appear as like a fading animation and then fade out. That's something that's almost impossible to do with just plain CSS before these behaviors were added. And you had to resort to JavaScript to add like a closing class and then wait for the transition. It was an absolute pain, but this makes it so easy to do. Now, when you're reading this code, essentially the way that you want to look at it is the property you have defined here with your display none, that is essentially what the closing state is going to be. So what do you want it to look like right before it disappears? The state that you have here inside of show is what the default state is going to be after all animations are complete and it's visible. And then your starting style is where you want to start from. So where do I want to start my animation from? Where do I want it to end? And where do I want my closing animation to end? That's essentially where you define these different properties at. Now, when it comes to browser support of transition behavior, it's pretty similar to starting style. If we look at the just basic property, you can see it's in Chrome, Edge, Safari, and Firefox actually has support, just not quite released yet. But if we look at it specifically with the display property right here, dealing with it for display only, you can see it's only in Chrome and Edge and Safari and Firefox are not quite there yet. I know that all of this browser support stuff probably really bums you out because you can't use it yet. But again, this is something that's all about extra performance. It's a progressive enhancement. So you can actually start using these properties. And if your CSS doesn't support these properties, you're just going to get the basic box that appears with no animation. So essentially, it's going to look like there's no animation at all inside your box. And it's just going to appear and it's just going to disappear, which is perfectly OK. That's going to give you an experience that works for most users. And the users that have a newer up to date browser are going to get a slightly fancier version, but it's still going to work for both sets of users. I'm honestly incredibly impressed with how quickly new CSS features are coming out. And if you want to keep up to date with all the latest CSS features, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and I'll link some videos on other bleeding edge CSS features right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.